Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Have you heard about the latest archaeological discovery in Japan? It's crazy. They found a 7.5 foot long iron sword that dates back to the 4th century. Can you imagine how massive that thing is? It's like something out of a fairy tale. The sword was discovered during excavations of a burial mound in the city of Nara, and according to the official narrative, it was believed that it was meant to protect those buried with it from evil spirits. So-called experts say that the sword was too large to be wielded as a weapon, which makes sense given its purpose. The archaeologist who found the sword, Riku Yurisi, was so surprised by its eyes that he doubted it was real. But after further examination, it was confirmed that the sword was indeed authentic and was an example of a Dakum sword. These swords have a distinctive wavy or undulating blade, similar to the Karas knives of Indonesia. While Dakum swords have been found in other ancient Japanese tombs, the size of this one is exceptional. In fact, Murasi said that it is twice as big as any other sword found in Japan so far. Can you imagine how big the person who was buried with it must have been? The burial mound where the sword was found is part of the Nara region, which is known for its thousands of burial mounds. These mounds are known as coffin and date back to the coffin period of Japanese history between 300 and 710 AD. It's estimated that there may be as many as 160,000 coffin throughout the country, ranging in size from 50 feet across to hundreds of feet across. The Tomio Marayama coffin, where the sword was found, is one of the largest in Japan. It has a diameter of more than 350 feet and a height of up to 32 feet. Well, it's believed that the coffin may commemorate the burial of a person related to the imperial Yamato family, excavations of the mound have only uncovered a giant coffin and not any human remains. I am increasingly wondering, where did the human remains in the giant coffin go? I mean, the sword was meant to protect those buried from evil spirits, but there was no one in the coffin. Hmm. In addition to the massive sword, archaeologists have found several other important artifacts from the coffin period in the Tomio Marayama coffin. These include iron farming tools, eating utensils, and containers made from copper. The latest excavations also unearthed a very large bronze mirror that is about two feet long and one foot wide, shaped like a shield. No such mirror from the coffin period has ever been found. Again, so-called experts believe that this mirror, like the sword, was intended to protect the dead from evil spirits. According to Kasaku Akabeashi, the deputy director for Nara Prefecture's Archaeological Institute of Kashihara, these discoveries indicate that the technology of the coffin period was beyond what had been previously imagined. That's the only statement I get from the mainstream news, stories about myths and missing skeletons. What do you think about this? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. One of the most amazing things about Kuguryo is the complex of tombs that they left behind. These tombs are like nothing else in the world, they are perfectly preserved pyramids with cut tops. When you see them, you know exactly what they are. There's no mistaking them for anything else. But get this, there's actually another place in the world that has a similar structure. It's all the way on the other side of the world, in Teotihuacan. Can you believe it? 
two places that are so far apart yet have such a similar structure. Now, official science has an explanation for all of this. They say that these tombs were built in honor of the rulers of these kingdoms. But when you start to look closer, you can't help but ask some logical questions. Why are these tombs so similar? Were they built by the same person or group of people? I mean, think about it. It's not like these kingdoms had a lot of contact with each other. They were separated by vast distances and had different cultures, religions, and ways of life. So why would they build such similar building? What do you think? Have you heard about the crazy dragon sighting in Bologna back in 1572 when Pope Gregory XIII became the new head honcho of the Catholic Church? Yeah, apparently this big scary dragon just popped up out of nowhere in the countryside and people were freaking out. But get this, the Pope had a secret weapon up his sleeve. He brought along his cousin who was an expert on dragons. I mean, who knew that was even a thing? His name was Ulysses Aldervandi, and he had been obsessed with dragons his whole life. He even had a collection of dragon remains, including one that was only slightly bigger than a human hand. Crazy right? Anyway, this little dragon is still on display today at the Bibliotica Universitaria di Bologna. I mean, I don't know about you, but I definitely want to check that out the next time I'm in Italy. But you know what's even more interesting? Medieval manuscripts actually depict dragons being used for practical purposes, like as guard animals, or even in combat with wild animals. Can you imagine having a pet dragon to protect your castle or fight off dangerous animals? It's like something straight out of Game of Thrones. I wonder what other secrets history has been hiding from us. What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.